praise the Lord. Amen.
sure it's Jesus is mine. She had about a week before she had the baby. She fractured her part of her right foot on the top, so she can't put much weight on it right now. So she needs prayer because she has a, a difficult time trying to do anything. You know, with that foot. And such a big baby. Oh my Ten God. pounds. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> she, she had it at home. She said that was the worst pain she had ever experienced. Can imagine. Yeah. I don't know how she had it. I don't know. The ventilator, they're turning it off tonight. Which is why she said pass away. Oh, oh, right. that's too bad. Who? A, a friend of mine. Oh. What's her name? Diane. My friend Lynn, her brother is dying of cancer. She said he doesn't have much longer to live. So much sickness. Yeah. Well, Pastor, uh, Pastor Bob and Pastor Mike up in North Dakota have both been asking for prayer for a young friend of theirs uh, who did pass away. Cancer, or what, you know? Should we pray for a pastor here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a 
praise. Okay. I thought everything else is bad news. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Margaret uh, is out of the hospital. They finally got her heart straightened out because it was a while. And now they are going to do surgery on her, but I don't know when it hasn't been set yet. But they've been putting it off because of her heart. <laughs> so. Praise the Lord. That's good. So she's Margaret in California. So, what? So she still has to have surgery, Margaret. She she doesn't have it scheduled yet, but, but we she still will need be to able to have it now. On the list, she'll be able to have it now. Okay. Shall we pray? Our heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you've given us. Thank you for the beautiful weather that we had the last few days. Lord, we pray for those that are in Florida and not having such a good time with, with their weather. We pray for the hurricane. We pray for each one victim. We pray that you will be lifted up, Lord. Comfort those that are in need. We think of some of our loved ones that there at her foot. We pray that you would send her healing, Lord. Diane. Lord, we pray that you'll come to her and take her into your kingdom. Pray for Pastor Bob's friend. Pray that you'll be with him, Lord, and come with her family. Lord, we would pray for Margaret. That you'll continue to heal her, Lord, and prepare her for the new surgery. May your spirit be with her. Lord, we thank you for this place that we have where we come together and worship you. We pray that your spirit will be with us. You will guide us and teach us your way. We pray these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. I forgot to mention that Lorreen Vissenden's granddaughter lives right down in the path of the hurricane, and they decided to stay there, not to evacuate. So we're praying that she's her only granddaughter, too. And only. So yeah. she's in uh, Orlando. Going to get there about probably about right now. Yeah. Hard to know what to do. Yeah. You know, in that circumstance, it's hard to know whether to stay or go or what to do. Yeah. Our study tonight is God's free health plan. Made the text study guide number 13. <laughs> Great. Medical care is for priceless. But wouldn't it be great if we didn't need doctors anymore? Well, did you know there is a proven way to put a lot of doctors out of work? Take care of your body. Scientists have sounded the alarm about cholesterol, tobacco, stress, obesity, and alcohol. So why pressure luck? God truly cares how you treat your body. And he has given you a free health care plan to go by the Bible. For amazing facts, for amazing facts about how you can have abundant health and longer life, look over the study guide. Be sure to read it all before jumping to conclusion. Number one, our health principles really a part of the Bible religion. Three John one and two. Beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Answer. Yes, the Bible reads health right near the top of the list of important. A person's mind, spiritual nature, and body are all interrelated and inter interdependent. What affects one affects the other. If the body is misused, the mind is, and the spiritual nature cannot become what God planned it should be. And you won't be able to live in a bundle life. See John 10.10. 10. Why did God give health principles to his people? The Lord commanded us to observe all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive, Deuteronomy 6.24. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from 
the midst of you. Exodus 25, 35. God gave us health principles because he knows what is best for the human body. Automobile manufacturers place an operations manual in the glove compartment of each new car because they know what is best for their creation. God knows who made their body, who made our bodies, also has an operations manual. It is the Bible. The glory of God's operations manual often results in disease, twisted thinking, and burned out lives. Just as abusing a car can result in serious car trouble, following God's principles results in saving health. Saving health. Psalm 64, 2. And more abundant life, John 10, 10. With our cooperation, God can use these great health laws to significantly reduce and eliminate the effects of the diseases of Satan. Psalms 103, 2, and 3. Number three. Do God's health principles have anything to do with eating and drinking? <clears throat> eat what is good. Isaiah 55, 2. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. The answer, yes, a Christian will even eat and drink differently, all to the glory of God, choosing only what is good. If God says a thing is not fit to eat, he must have a good reason. He is not a harsh dictator, but a loving father. All his counsel is for our good always. The Bible promises no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Psalms 84, 11. So if God withholds a thing from us, it is probably because it's not good for us. There's a note there. No person can eat his or her way into heaven. Only acceptance of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior can do that. Ignoring God's health laws, however, might cause a person to lose his good judgment and fall into sin, even to the point of losing <coughs> salvation. Number four, what did God give people to eat when he created them in a perfect environment? God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, every tree whose fruit yields seed, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Genesis 1, 29, 2, and verse 16. Answer, the diet God gave people in the beginning was fruit, grains, and nuts. Vegetables were added a little later. Genesis 3, 18. What items are specifically mentioned by God as being unclean and forbidden? In Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14, God points out the following food groups as being unclean. Read both chapters in full. All animals that do not both chew the cud and have a split hoof, Deuteronomy 14, 6. All fish and water creatures that do not have both fins and scales, Deuteronomy 14, 9. Nearly all fish are clean. All birds of prey, carrion eaters, and fish eaters, Leviticus 11, 13 through 19. Most creeping things or invertebrates, Leviticus 11, 21 through 44. Now, these chapters make it clear that most animals, birds, and water creatures people ordinarily eat are clean. There are, however, some notable exceptions. According to God's rules, the following animals are unclean and are not to be eaten. Cats, dogs, horses, camels, eagles, vultures, hogs, squirrels, rabbits, catfish, eels, lobsters, clams, crabs, shrimp, oysters, frogs, and others. If a person eats pork or likes pork and eats it, will he really be destroyed at the second coming? Behold, the Lord will come with fire, and by his sword the Lord will judge all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves, eating swine's flesh and the, and the abomination and the mouse, uh, shall be consumed together. Isaiah 16, verse 13 Answer. This may be shocking, but it is true. And must be told, the Bible says that anyone who eats swine's flesh and other unclean things that are in 
abomination will be destroyed at the coming of the Lord. When God says to leave something alone and not eat it, you should by all means obey him. After all, the eating of forbidden fruit by Adam and Eve brought sin and death to this world in the first place. Can anyone say it doesn't matter? God says people will be destroyed because they chose that in which I do not delight. Isaiah 66, 4. Number seven. But didn't this law of clean and unclean animals originate with Moses? Wasn't it, wasn't it for the Jews only? And didn't it end at the cross? The Lord said to Noah, take with you seven each of every clean animal, two each of animals that are unclean. Genesis 7, 1 and 2. Answer, no, no on all points. Noah lived long before any Jews existed, but he knew of the clean and unclean animals because he took into the ark the clean ones by sevens and the unclean ones by twos. Revelation 18.2 refers to some birds as being unclean just before the second coming of Christ. The death of Christ did not in any way affect or change these health laws. Since the Bible says that all who break them will be destroyed when Jesus returns. Isaiah 66.15-17 the Jews' digestive system in no way differs from the Gentiles' digestive system. These health laws are for all people for all time. Does the Bible say anything about the use of alcoholic beverages? Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Proverbs 20, verse 1. Do not look on wine when it is red. When it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly, at the last it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. Proverbs 23, 31, and 32. Neither fornicators nor drunkards will inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 10. Answer, yes, the Bible strongly warns against the use of alcohol beverages. Does the Bible warn against the use of other harmful substances such as tobacco? Yes. The Bible gives six reasons why the use of harmful substances such as tobacco are displeasing to God. The use of harmful substances injures health and defiles the body. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Nicotine is an addictive substance that enslaves people. Romans 6, 16. It says that we become servants to whomever or whatever we yield ourselves. Tobacco users are slaves to nicotine. Jesus said, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you shall you shall serve sorry Matthew 14 the tobacco habit is unclean come out from among them and be separate says the Lord do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you 2 Corinthians 6 17 isn't it preposterous to think that Christ using tobacco in any form the use of harmful substances waste money why do you spend money for what is not bread? Isaiah 55, 2. We are God's stewards of the money given us, and it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. 1 Corinthians 4, 2. The use of harmful substances weakens our ability to discern the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. 1 Peter 2, 11. The use of harmful substances is a fleshly lust. The use of harmful substances shortens life. Science has confirmed that the use of tobacco can dramatically shorten lifespans. This breaks God's command against killing, Exodus 20:13. Even though it is a slow murder, it is still murder. One of the best ways to 
postpone your funeral is to quit using tobacco. Amen. Mm -hmm. What are some of the simple yet important health laws found in the Bible? Answer, there are 11 Bible health principles. <clears throat> A, eat your meals at regular intervals and do not use animal, fat, or blood. Feast, eat at the proper time, Ecclesiastes 10, 17. This shall be a perpetual statute. You shall eat neither fat nor blood, Leviticus 3:17. Note, science has confirmed that most heart attacks result from high cholesterol and that the use of fats is largely responsible for high levels of cholesterol. It looks like the Lord knows what he's talking about after all, doesn't it? B, don't overeat. Put a knife to your throat if you are a man given to appetite. Proverbs 23.2 In Luke 21.34, Christ specifically warned against carousing intemperance in the last days. Overeating, a form of intemperance, is responsible for many degenerate diseases. C. Don't harbor envy or hold grudges. These kinds of sinful feelings actually disrupt body processes. The Bible says that envy is rottenness to the bones. Proverbs 14, 30. Christ even commanded us to clear up grudges that, might, that others might hold against us. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. D, maintain a cheerful, happy disposition. A merry heart does good like medicine. Proverbs 17, 22. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. Many diseases from which people suffer are a result of depression. A cheerful, happy disposition imparts health and prolongs life. E, Put full trust in the Lord. The fear of the Lord leads to life, and he who has it will abide in satisfaction. Proverbs 19.23 Trust in the Lord strengthens health and life. My son, give attention to my words, for they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. Proverbs 4, 20 and 22 Health comes from obedience to God's commands, and uh, from putting full trust in him. F, balance work and exercise with sleep and rest. Six days you shall leave, labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God, in it you shall do no work. Uh, Exodus 20, 9 and 10. The sleeping of a laboring man is sweet. Ecclesiastes 5, 12. In the sweat of your face, face you shall eat bread. Genesis 3.19 It is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late. Uh, Psalm 127.2 For what has man for all his labor and for the striving of his heart with which he has toiled under the sun? Even in the night his heart takes no rest. This also is vanity. Ecclesiastes 2.22 and 23 G. Keep your body clean. Be clean. It says in Isaiah 20, uh, 52, 11. H, be temperate in all things. Everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. 1 Corinthians 9, 25. <clears throat> Let your gentleness, this is from King, uh, King James Version, moderation, be known to all men. Philippians 4, 5. A Christian should completely avoid things that are harmful and be moderate in the use of things that are good. Habits that injure health break the command, ye shall not murder by degrees. They are suicide on the installment plan. I avoid anything harmful to the body. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. This might surprise you, but medical science confirms that tea, coffee, and soft drinks that contain the drug caffeine and other harmful ingredients are damaging to the human body. None of these contain food value except through the sugar or cream added, and most of us already use too much sugar. 
Stimulants give a damaging artificial boost to the body and are like, are like trying to carry a ton in a wheelbarrow. The po popularity of these drinks is due not to flavor or advertising, but to the doses of caffeine and sugar they contain. Many Americans are sickly because of their addiction to coffee, tea, and soft drinks. This delights the devil and damages human lives. J, make mealtime a happy time. Every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Ecclesiastes 3.13. Happy scenes at mealtime hinder, unhappy scenes at mealtime hinder digestion. Avoid them. K, help those who are in need. Loose the bonds of wickedness. Undo the heavy burdens. Share your bread with the hungry and bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, cover him, and your healing shall spring forth speedily. Isaiah 58, 6-8. This is too plain to be under, misunderstood. When we help the poor and needy, we improve our own health. Amen. 11. What solemn reminder is given to those who ignore God's principles? Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Galatians 6, 7. Answer. Those who ignore God's health principles will more likely reap broken bodies and burned out lives. Just as one who abuses his automobile will likely have serious car trouble. And those who continue to break God's laws of health and ultimately be dis will ultimately be destroyed. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. God's health laws are not arbitrary. They are natural, established laws of the universe, such as the law of gravity. Ignoring these laws can bring disastrous results. The Bible says, a curse without cause shall not come. Proverbs 26, 2. Trouble comes when we ignore the laws of health. God in mercy tells us what these laws are, so we may avoid the tragedies that result from breaking. Number 12, what shocking truth about health involves the children and grandchildren. You shall not eat it, that it may go well with you and your children after you. Deuteronomy 12, 25. I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate them. Exodus 20, verse 5. Answer. God makes it plain that children and grandchildren to the fourth generation pay for the folly of the parents who ignore God's health principles. The children and the grandchildren inherit weakness, sickly bodies when their mothers and fathers desire God's rule for their lives. Wouldn't you avoid anything else that might harm your precious children and grandchildren? What is a sobering fact that God's word revealed? Joshua by no means entered God's kingdom of glory. Anything that defiles. Revelation 21, 27. And as for those whose hearts follow the desire of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. Ezekiel 11, 21. Nothing defiling or unclean will be permitted in God's kingdom. All filthy habits defile a person. The use of improper food defiles a person. Daniel 1.8 It is sobering but true. Choosing their own ways and those things of which God does not delight will end up costing people their eternal salvation. Isaiah 66, 3, 4, 15 through 17. 14. What? should every sincere Christian endeavor to do at once. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Everyone who has this hope in him, Christ, purifies himself just as he is pure. 1 John 3, 3. If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. Since Christians will bring their lives into harmony, sincere Christians will bring their lives into harmony with God's health principles immediately because they love him. 
They know that his rules only add to their happiness and protects them from the devil's diseases. Acts 10.38 God's counsel and rules are always for our good, just as good parents' rules and counsel are best for their children. And once we know better, God holds us accountable. To him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. James 4.17 Number 15. Some evil habits bind people's souls. So tightly, what can they do? As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. John 1 12. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4 13. Answer You can take all of these habits to Christ and lay them at his feet. He will joyfully give you a new heart and the power you need to break any sinful habit and become a son or daughter of God. Ezekiel 11, 18 and 19. How thrilling and heartwarming it is to know that with God all things are possible. Mark 10, 27. And Jesus said, the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. John 6, 37. Jesus is ready to break the shackles that bind us. He longs to set us free, and he will, but only, but only we will permit it. Our worries, bad habits, nervous tensions, and fears will be gone when we do his bidding. These things I have spoken to you that your joy may be full. John 15, 11. The devil argues that freedom is found in disobedience, but this is false. John 8, 44. Children. What thrilling promises are given about God's new kingdom? The inhabitant will not say, I am sick. Isaiah 33, 24. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. Revelation 21, 4. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. The citizens of God's new kingdom will gladly follow his health principles, and there will be no sickness or disease. They will be blessed with eternal vigor and youth and will live with God in supreme joy and happiness throughout all eternity. Sure. First Timothy 4, 4 says, Every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused. Can you explain this? Answer, the scripture passage is referring to foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving. Verse 3, by his people. These foods are the clean foods listed in Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14. Verse 4 makes it clear that all creatures of God are good and not to be refused, provided they are among those created to be received with thanksgiving, clean animals. Verse 5 tells why these animals or foods are acceptable. They are sanctified by God's word, which say they are clean, and by a prayer, a blessing, which is offered before the meal. Please note, however, that people who try to sanctify themselves while eating unclean foods will ultimately be destroyed. Isaiah 66, 17. 2. Matthew 15, 11 says, Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth. How do you explain this? Answer. The subject in Matthew 15, 1 through 20 is eating without first washing of the hands. Verse 2. The focus here is not eating, but washing. The scribes taught that eating any food without a special ceremony washing defiled the eater. Jesus said that these ceremonial, ceremonial washings were meaningless. In verse 19, he listed certain evils, murders, adulteries, thefts, etc. Then he concluded, these are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. Verse 20. 
Didn't Jesus cleanse all animals in Peter's vision as recorded in Acts 10? No, the subject of this vision is not animals but people. God gave Peter this vision to show him that the Gentiles were not unclean, as the Jews believed. God had instructed Cornelius, a Gentile, to send men to visit Peter. But Peter would have refused to see them if God had not given him this vision. Because Jewish law forbade entertaining, entertaining Gentiles, verse 28. But when the men finally did arrive, Peter welcomed them, explaining that ordinarily he would not have done so, and saying, God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean, verse 28. In the next chapter, Acts 11, the church members criticized Peter for speaking with these Gentiles. So Peter told them the whole story of his vision and its meaning. And Acts 11.18 says, When they heard these things, they became silent and glorified God, saying, Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Four. What did God make the hog for? Have not to eat. Answer. He made it for the same purpose that he made the buzzard, as a scavenger to clean up garbage. And the hog serves this purpose admirably. All right, Romans 14, 3, 14, and 20. It says, Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat. There is nothing unclean of itself. All things indeed are pure. Can you explain this? Answer, verses 3 through 6. Contrast people who eat certain things with those who do not. The passage does not say either is right, but rather counsels that neither pass judgment on the other. Instead, let God be the judge. Verses 4, 10 to 12. Verses 14 and 20 refer to foods that were first offered to idols and thus were ceremonially unclean, not to the clean and unclean meats of Leviticus chapter 11. Read 1 Corinthians 8, 1, 4, 10, and 13. The point of the discussion is that no food is unclean or impure just because it has been first offered to idols because an idol is nothing in the world, 1 Corinthians 8, 4. But if a person's conscience bothers her for eating such food, she should leave it alone. Or even if it merely offends someone else, she should likewise abstain. Number six. Is it enough just to love the Lord and not concern ourselves with God's law of health? Answer. If you truly love the Lord, you will be eager to obey His health laws, if that's the way He has designed for you to achieve optimal health, happiness, and purity. He became the author of, of eternal salvation to all who obey Him. Hebrews 5 9. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, John 14, 15. When we truly love the Lord, we won't try to dodge his health laws or any other commandments or make excuses. This attitude actually reveals the true heart in the other things of God. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. And so, come on. Amen. Any questions? Any comments? I made it pretty clear. <laughs> pretty straightforward. I think the Bible is pretty straightforward. The Lord didn't make any junk, and He certainly doesn't want us to, to consume it. No. Some animals were created to clean, cleanse the earth. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your holy word for the clearness and the understanding from your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that your word will live in us, that we will grow and gain more knowledge of you, that we will be your people and you will be our God. Go with us the rest of this week, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.